Are you practicing painting like a hobbyist? Or are you practicing painting like a professional? This topic came up quite a few times in the comments of my most recent video on what to do if you want to paint full time in retirement. And today I wanna to respond to those questions and I want to dive specifically into this question of what it means to practice like a pro and make that transition between being a hobbyist or practicing your craft like a hobbyist and practicing your craft like a professional, regardless of whether or not you want to sell work. If you're new here, my name is Chelsea. I am a full-time professional oil painter specializing in expressive portraits. Every week I share a new video with you on how you can master your unique style of painting. So if you enjoy this video or learn something helpful, make sure you like and subscribe and hit the bell icon. And if you especially enjoy or learn from my content and you would like help achieving professional quality in your portraiture, I do offer mentorships designed to help you to reach your biggest painting goal. Goals. For more information on those, make sure to check out the link in the description to find out more and apply to see if we are fit to work together. So let's jump in and I want to kick off with a specific question that came in from the comments. It reads, thank you for this. Painting when I retire is one of my goals. What do you consider a hobbyist painter or level of proficiency? I found that the term hobbyist can be a pretty broad category that applies to anyone who creates art who doesn't do it as a job. Thank you for asking this question. I think it's a fantastic one. And the answer isn't gonna be the same for everybody, but for my purposes, here's who I consider a hobbyist versus a professional. I'm gonna start with the professional side of things because I think this is the one that can have the most variation. For me, a professional is somebody who wants to treat their practice the way a professional does and wants to create professional quality work. That is work that could sell, regardless of whether or not your goal is to make any income from your work. I actually work with painters who have all kinds of goals, for ranging from wanting to paint full time or already painting full time, to painters who have no intention of ever selling work, but they simply want to be really proud of the work that they make, and being proud of their work means, by definition, that they are working at a very high level, or to put it another way, they have mastered their craft. By contrast, I would consider someone a hobbyist when they aren't necessarily focused on what the quality level of the outcome is. They're focused first and foremost on painting for their own enjoyment. Now, as you can imagine, there's a little bit of overlap between these two. Ideally, professionals are painting for their own enjoyment as well, but I do think this distinction between prioritizing a certain style or quality level or level of craftsmanship versus first and foremost prioritizing how you feel while painting is a helpful distinction. I think another way you could put this is, you know when there was like that coloring book craze a long time ago where like everybody had adult coloring books? I don't see it as much anymore, but I thought this was such a wonderful idea. The whole point is that, you know, making art or crafting of any kind is inherently soothing. It's a very meditative process. And I actually, I have a lot of friends who paint in this way. You know, they, they break out their watercolors, their color pencils, their sketch pads, mostly just as an act of self-regulation. The professional might find meditative qualities in creating a painting as well, but there's this added level of pressure that the work really needs to look a specific way. And to build on this, I would say that there's a really significant difference between how you practice as a hobbyist and as a professional. Typically, when we are a beginner, when we're becoming a hobbyist, we are going to practice simply by saying, I want to paint, and so we get out our paints and we sit down and embark on a painting. And that's really about as complex as it often gets. Or to take it a step further, we say, I wanna get better at painting, so we get out our paints and we simply do it more. And when we're at the beginning of our journey, this works really well. We oftentimes just need a certain amount of repetition and experience just to get a feel for the paint for our brushes so we can learn the ins and outs of how to work off of a reference and what mistakes we need to avoid across this whole process. That just requires experience more so than any theoretical knowledge or highly tuned practice regimen. And if you go back to one of my recent videos on how long my journey to becoming a professional took, you can see a lot of paintings that I made when I was very much in this stage. I didn't have a very clear goal of what kind of work I wanted to make when I was younger. I simply wanted to make something. I enjoyed the act of making artwork. 
And that's not to say that I might not have had a specific goal for a specific piece, but overall, I didn't have an overarching structure that was guiding my practice. Then when I realized that I wanted to do this full time, I realized that I couldn't do that by jumping all over the place and exploring different styles and different mediums. I couldn't just sit down to paint whenever I felt like it. Instead, I really needed to have a consistent style. I needed to have a body of work that reflected that. And above all else, I needed to make sure that the quality level was worthy of being called professional. So to do that, I had to start by getting really clear on what my vision for that actually was. What was the threshold of high enough quality? What kind of style did I want to be synonymous with my name? And then I had to figure out what my practice needed to look like in order to help me produce that kind of work. You know, what skills did I need to build up? What kind of techniques did I have to have on lock? Whether you're wanting to paint full-time in retirement, or you have a different goal with your artwork that's nonetheless just as serious, having this clear idea of where you're headed and what the gap is between that goal and where you are now is so important. And I think this is really the crux of what separates the hobbyist from the professional. So if you're at this turning point where you feel like your practice has just been you deciding to sit down to paint, I would really encourage you to think about what needs to go in to your practice, structurally speaking, or what kind of support might you need to give yourself the kind of structure that's going to help you to really level up your whole practice and make every minute at the easel really count and amount to the kind of work that you want to make. And from here, I want to go ahead and read another comment that I received from that last video. It says, thanks for this, great advice. As someone painting seriously in retirement, I didn't know that so many others reflect on these questions. I found it hard to tell people why I'm putting so much time slash effort into it. So I asked our quote, real artist son, what he would say. He would express my goals this way. I approach art and painting as more serious than a hobby, but if that's all it becomes, that's fine. This summer, I'm auditing a drawing course at the local community college three days a week, four hours a day, besides having about three or four oil paintings going. Most of my work would be studies or workouts with one or two serious works going on. When I feel like I need a break or instant gratification, I grab the hairdryer and whip out an acrylic portrait or pet portrait to give to family or friends. I sell enough that I can afford pro quality supplies and pay taxes after expenses. I highly recommend painting in retirement to anyone who is able. And I just have to say, what a beautiful comment. And I, I relate to this so much for a number of different reasons, actually. What's interesting about this is that I would say that if you are this serious about your work, even if maybe it only ever becomes a quote hobby, that doesn't mean you aren't painting like a professional. And that's like one of those distinctions that made me want to make this video in the first place. I don't think it comes down to how much you're earning from your work. I think it has to do with how diligent and regimented you are in your practice and what is the quality level that you really want to be putting out into the world with your work. You can create absolutely masterful paintings and never make a dime off of them, but they can still be incredibly valuable, both to you and the people who get to enjoy those pieces. And the fact that you already are earning enough from your work to afford those professional quality supplies and pay taxes is absolutely incredible. It's such a strong starting point. And when I work with painters who have a goal of selling their work or growing their business, this is where I like to see them before we begin our work together, because having this foundation where you're already taking your work this seriously gives you such an advantage. But the main reason why I wanted to respond to this is just because of a personal story. A few years ago, I was practicing for the national dance competition for the kind of dancing that I do. And I was in physical therapy twice a week, every week leading up to it, because I was just trying to recover from a couple of injuries and stave off a couple of others. And so I knew everyone in this PT office really well. And I went off to nationals and unexpectedly with my partner won my category. And I just, I never thought that could happen. And I was so excited when I came into physical therapy the next week to tell everyone in that office that all of our hard work had paid off. And instead, for whatever reason, the main therapist, the main physical therapist that I worked with probably was just having one of those days and just came in and sat me down and didn't ask how the competition went or anything and just said, you know, why are you doing this? You're not getting paid to do this and like you're putting your body through the ringer. 
I don't even remember what I said to it. I don't think I even shared the results of like how I did in that competition. I, I was just stunned. I'm like stunned even now thinking about it as I tell this story, you know, six, seven years later. The point wasn't that I was putting my body through all of that because I was going to get paid. The point was that I was putting my body through all of that because I loved it and I felt like I couldn't live without it. And I think a lot of you can probably relate to that in your own painting practice. And so I just empathized so completely with, you know, this commenter who said, I found it hard to tell people why I'm putting so much time and effort into it. You don't have to justify that with what you earn from your work. Justify it by how much you love it, first and foremost, and, you know, by the joy you get to share with people. That, to me, right there, is a professional. If these kinds of pep talks <laughs> and structure, and of course the kind of feedback that teaches you exactly what to be doing in your painting practice, if all of that sounds like what you're needing, again, make sure to check out the links in the description to learn more about my mentorships. I would love to hear from you, and I hope this video has been helpful. It was definitely helpful for me to talk about this and answer these questions and share this with you. So thank you for, you know, the privilege of getting to do that and be a part of your life in that way. All right, until next time, happy painting.